So out of nowhere, I was like, ha, you blinked, I win. Now let's get back on with the lesson. Welcome back to my channel. I can actually say that now because this is the second video in this series. The video prior to this one talked about tips to get you ready for the first day of school. And I had a completely different video in mind for today and it was gonna be what to do your first day of school. But then I got to thinking, I don't think I gave y'all enough ideas on what to do before the big day comes. So this video is all about rules and consequences. So the point in today's video is to give you guys some resources or even ideas on how to set up your classroom management plan. Now, there's way more to the topic of classroom management than rules and consequences, but since this is kind of a lengthy topic, I figured I would start with this first and then I'd go more into it later. So if you wanna figure out some ideas to set up rules and consequences that actually work, please keep watching. One thing that I found that is very important is to read your student handbook, especially the part where they talk about infractions, um, behaviors, and things that the school does not tolerate. You need to come up with some things that are what I like to call non-negotiables for your rules. So obviously people have keep your hands, feet, and objects to yourself, raise your hand to speak or get out of your seat. Those are kind of a given, I figure, for the most part. I have things in my classroom that I consider non-negotiables. The first one is, do not talk while the teacher is talking. One of my biggest pet peeves as a teacher is whenever I'm teaching, I'm explaining something, I'm going into a really good story and I think I'm being very animated and then I hear some kids talking. I will stop in my tracks and I will just stare them down. Now usually all I have to do is stop talking and look at them and this usually keeps them from talking or they'll just stop or other kids will be like, hey, hush, she's talking. But one time I remember there was this little boy that would not stop talking and I just did the whole stare at him thing and he met my gaze. So he looked back at me and he started staring at me. Now mind, or now keep in mind that this boy is kind of aggressive and the tension was actually building in the room because we were having to stare down. And I was sitting there thinking, how am I gonna get out of this without making him look bad? And, you know, so out of nowhere, I was like, ha, you blinked, I win. Now let's get back on with the lesson. And that made everybody laugh. It broke up the tension in the class. The third one is only one person on the floor at a time. So uh, any kid can get up. They can sharpen their pencil, they can get tissue, they can blow their nose, they can do any of those things as long as nobody else is up. Because as you know, a lot of times kids will get into confrontations or they'll want to get up because their friend's up sharpening their pencil. This avoids my very last non-negotiable is always ask questions. I personally teach math, but this works in any classroom situation. And as long as the kids know that it's okay to ask questions, whether in private or out loud in front of everybody, I'm okay with that. Because a lot of times when kids don't do well, it's because they're too afraid to ask questions. I wanna also add that I have a disclaimer that basically says that um, students are expected to follow all rules in the student handbook or students are expected to follow all school rules. So I can have my four non-negotiables and they still have to follow the school rules. So those are the things that I personally do. So you just decide what is important to you and what you are not gonna tolerate. And those are the things that I think you should put on your board. Now in my previous video, I talked about discipline ladders. Now I've been in schools where you can create your own consequences and I've also been in schools where they give you your own discipline ladder and they tell you exactly what steps to follow when a child is breaking rules. So at my school, we actually have a discipline ladder. The first consequence is a warning. I just say, so-and-so, this is your warning. And it's best to do this in private where no other students can hear you. Because a lot of times when they're on the spot, they'll feel like they need to put on a show. The second consequence is a written warning. I give them a piece of paper that says, 
you know, what they did and the time and they have to sign it, I have to sign it, their parents have to sign it. And usually before I send these home, I take a picture of it with my phone and I have a whole folder that I keep these in just for my personal doc. The third consequence is lunch detention. Basically, what this means is, is the kid will have to come sit at my table, be completely quiet and eat. But a lot of times I talk their head off and I use this opportunity to get to know them a little bit better. Same thing, I take a picture of this, I let them sign it, and then they come eat lunch with me. The fourth consequence is a teacher detention. This could also be another lunch detention. This could be after school detention. This could be in your class detention. It's just a teacher detention, whatever fits your needs. So the teacher detention is basically they come to your room, they can write lines, they can copy out the dictionary, but if there's not many people in my room at this time, I usually take this opportunity to play games with them, like go fish or Scrabble or whatever you have in your room. But if you don't have time for that, then I would either have them um, copy pages out of a book, maybe copy math formulas, whatever your subject is, I would keep it related to the content. So at least if they're copying something down, it's something they need to memorize. Now, also with this consequence, I usually recommend them to the counselor. I'm very lucky because at my school, they have wonderful counselors that are actually there to counsel students. So they go see the counselor and they talk about why they're being disruptive. Step five on my school's discipline ladder is another teacher detention. Same as what we discussed earlier. Step six, you guessed it, two teacher detentions. And also we recommend them to the TST committee. TST represents teacher support team. And this is basically where teachers and counselors and administrators sit down with the child and their parents and they talk about ways that they can help them be more successful with their behavior and their grades. So at this point, if they've reached here in the ladder, then we obviously need another intervention. And then step seven, this is when we finally send them to the principal's office because we have done everything we can. Now you're probably thinking, well, you know, You've talked about parents signing these things and everything, but when did you contact them? I'm glad you asked. We contact parents every step after the warning. So if a kid is acting up, that parent's gonna hear from me at least five more times until they get to the office. That way they can't say, oh, I had no idea what to do about this, or I did not know this was going on. You have your documentation, and when you're ready to send this child to the, um, when you're ready to send this child in with the referral, you will have this form filled out front and back and they should have everything they need to do what they need to do. When this discipline plan was presented to us last school year, a lot of teachers were really upset with it because it was seven steps, seven steps, seven, okay? And I'm one of those that it was a lot and it was a lot of contacting parents, but I'm a rule follower. I do what my boss tells me to do. And even though I didn't really care for it too much, I followed it. And let me tell you what I learned. Once I followed it, you notice that we contact parents from steps two through seven. And also you'll notice in these consequences, there's a lot of student and teacher detention. So if a kid keeps acting up, guess what? They spend a lot of time with me. And I always tell them at the beginning, you must like me or love me so much because you want to spend all your time with me. And what happens is I end up building really strong relationships with these children that give us the most problems. And it might be some work in the beginning, but as the year goes on, they're like your best friend and they'll be the ones that say, uh-uh, don't do that to Miss Mac or whatever your name is. They won't do that. They'll be like, all you have to do with her is say, yes, ma'am, and you're done. And that's so true. So just... Keep in mind that it might seem crazy, but the more you do it, the better your relationships will be with the students. Parents might get a little annoyed of all the contact, but the whole goal is to keep the kids safe and to keep them learning, right? Right. So I hope this was helpful. Please visit my website. It is hotforteaching.weebly.com. And what you will find there are resources like I've talked about in this video that will help you. I've also made them editable so you can customize them the way you want. I hope this really helps you. Because remember, the whole reason why I created this YouTube channel and the companion website was to help new teachers not go through the things that I've gone through. 
you get to the website, make sure you download all these resources because if you decide to use this very lengthy consequence ladder, you will have some resources. And I suggest printing off each consequence, like the teacher detention form, the um, lunch detention form, all those forms on different colorful paper. That way it's easy to see. Make sure you stock up on these, make sure you're ready to roll, and document everything. So the more you document, the better it will be for you, your administrators, and the parents. Now, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. I plan on creating another video very soon that talks about other ways you can prepare for that first day of school. Well, have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. And granted, I know you have different personality than I do. You might not be as bubbly and over the top. Kids might seem to, oh God, that sucked. The second consequence. <laughs> Bye, thank you again. I just don't like my exits. Let me try that again. Bye, thank you again. No, still not good. How about this one? Bye, thank you again.